Hi there. My name's Bryony Pierce and I'm a novelist. I write scary stories for young adults and thrillers for adults. A little while ago, I wrote a novel for the Stripes Red Eye series called Savage Island. When it won the Wirral Book Awards, I was asked to write a sequel. That was called Cruel Castle and that's out this week. Cruel Castle contains some of the same characters from Savage Island. You'll particularly remember Ben, Lizzie and Grady. However, it contains new characters, a new location, and it's written in a slightly different way from three points of view. Ben's point of view, Lizzie's point of view, and of course, Grady's point of view. In Cruel Castle, Grady is um, working for Marcus Gold and doesn't want to be. And Ben and Lizzie are trying to take him down. They end up being sent on a team building exercise to a place called Stowling Keep, where things very swiftly um, get very savage. Cruel Castle is essentially an enormous escape room. I'm a big fan of escape rooms, so I had an awful lot of fun creating the puzzles that Ben, Lizzie and Grady were going to have to solve in order to survive. The Stripes Red Eye series is excellent. It's something that I always recommend to young adults who are looking for teen horror. There's a fantastic selection of novels within it, ranging from stories about zombies to ghosts to possessed dolls to um, vampires, werewolves. It's just absolutely brilliant. And of course, Savage Island, my very own geocaching horror story. I myself am a huge horror fan. I always have been. When I was 12 or 13, I was thrown out of the class and made to stand in the corridor for an hour for reading Stephen King's The Stand underneath the table when I was supposed to be paying attention to the teacher. What makes a great horror story? For me, um, and I'm using Stephen King as an example here, it has to be that feeling of normalcy that kind of runs through it, that feeling of this could happen to you. It could happen in your town, to your family. Stephen King's uh, characters are just normal characters, normal people who encounter these absolutely incredibly horrific situations and monsters, of course. And that's one of the things that I think really works well to make a good horror story. I do have my own top tips for writing horror. Obviously, you need to build up suspense, and that is um, a combination of setting, uh, atmosphere, the kind of the words that you choose, the way that you describe what's going on around the people, uh, the time of day, the time of year, weather. Um, the introduction of deadlines and ticking clocks, it's all about building up the tension and building up the atmosphere so that what starts off being um, a fairly normal scenario ends up being quite horrific. My second tip is about character. You must write characters that the readers love and care about. We have to be thoroughly invested in what happens to them. And part of that is giving the characters something to lose. You know, um, if you're going to have a character make a great sacrifice, it has to involve a great loss. Of course, I think that unexpected twists are also essential in horror. Make the monster something that you don't expect. Put something behind it. Um, a few jump scares are great. You know, make sure that the reader is constantly being surprised as well as horrified. Lastly, I do think that a good horror story does need a little bit of gore. Um, I don't think that it needs to be relentless, but I do think that it contributes to the sense of horror if the reader knows that there is going to be some blood. This is a reading from Cruel Castle. Grady has been asked to Gold's office and believes that his plan to take him down has been uncovered. So he sends a message to Lizzie and Ben in Wales to tell them to get out. This is a chapter from Lizzie's point of view. I jump when my phone beeps with an incoming message. The noise is vulgar in the muffled quiet. For a moment, surprise makes me stupid, but then I glance down. Get out. I gape for a second and then leap to my feet. Ben! He hears the urgency in my voice, but there is still a hesitation before he barrels into the bedroom. For an instant when I see him come in, I almost think it's Will. Who'd have thought that some dye in a haircut would make Ben look so different? At least if I hardly recognise him, Gold won't either. I hold the phone out to show him. Ben takes in the message and is at the wardrobe before I can take another step. He drags two hall doors from the bottom and yanks them open. He tosses the gold international uniforms inside, followed by our stash of money, our fake IDs and the three remaining burner phones from behind the rotten skirting board. 
I snap our laptop closed, wrap it in a jumper, snag the miniature cameras I was testing and shove them into the other bag. Then I run into the bathroom and sweep my contacts inside. Everything else we can leave. I run for the door, but Ben catches my arm. The window. I turn around, pull up the sash and drop my bag carefully through the opening. There's a thud as it hits the ground and I wince, hoping the jumper has protected the laptop. I scramble onto the sill and look down. We're on the first floor. It's a drop, but nothing I can't handle. I'm a climber. I've jumped from higher. I leap and as I land, tuck and roll onto my shoulder and back to my feet in one smooth movement. Ben's hold all follows and he comes after it, gasping as he hits the ground. You forgot to roll. It doesn't matter. He picks up the bag. Go! We're in a walled courtyard behind an alleyway. In front of us, there's a broken garden chair. An ashtray sits behind it, filled with cigarette butts swimming in half an inch of dirty rainwater. I eye the wall. What if they're waiting for us? We've got to assume they'll go round the front. They won't know we're expecting them. But if Grady... We've got no choice, Lizzie. His tone is impatient. It's not very Ben-like. In fact, something in his voice reminds me of his brother. That's been happening more often recently. Maybe with Will in the picture, Guy had Ben had no choice but to be the good guy. Now Will is gone. Ben is free. He can be who he wants to be. I suppress a shiver. Is it possible that I hadn't known Ben Harper? Yes, I'm a huge horror fan. I love to watch horror films. My favourites are Pitch Black, Aliens and uh, Cabin in the Woods by Joss Whedon. I think that's incredibly clever. Um, I do have more horror books planned. Um, I also have another one that came out this year with Uclan called Raising Hell, which is slightly more urban fantasy, but definitely horror with uh, ghosts, zombies, hellhounds and teen witches. So do look out for that one as well. And yes, uh, enjoy uh, Cruel Castle. Enjoy reading a bit of horror. Horror is something that is thrilling and escapist and hopefully you can work out the puzzles before the characters do and you can feel incredibly clever. Maybe you would survive Cruel Castle. Take care. Bye.